So this video is on our basic gas laws of Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, and the Combined Gas Law. So Boyle's Law is a law for gases where our temperature is constant. This states that as our pressure decreases, our volume will increase. So that means between pressure and volume, it's an inverse relationship. Boyle's Law has the formula P1V1 equals P2V2. So all these basic gas laws have our initial conditions, which are the ones, and then our final conditions, which are the two. Okay. So this means that as I increase my volume from this small balloon my big balloon, I have the same amount of gas particles in each one, but as I go from a small volume to a big volume, my gas particles have more room, therefore there's going to be less collision, therefore less pressure. So I increase my volume, but I'm going to decrease my pressure. Charles Law deals with temperature and volume. In Charles Law, our pressure is constant. And as temperature increases, volume decre or sorry, volume also increases. So because both of them increase, it is a direct relationship. Its formula is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay. Initial conditions, final conditions. So that means if I have my initial volume with my gas particles and they are cold and I take those gas particles and I make them hot they're going to bump around more. When they bump around more, they're going to expand my volume to be a bigger volume. They're going to push on my sides and they're going to expand. So my volume of my gas is going to increase. Okay? So because my pressure has to stay the same. If I just heat up inside here, my pressure would go up, but I have to maintain my same pressure. So my same number of collisions, but they're moving faster. So my volume increases. Gay-Lussac's law is our third basic law. Here our volume is constant. So our container is rigid. We can't change it. So as I increase my temperature, my particles are going to move around faster because that increases my kinetic energy. And therefore my pressure is going to also increase because I'm having more collisions. More collisions makes more pressure. So therefore, this is also a direct relationship. The formula for Gay-Lussac's law is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So here I have a rigid container. I have my gas particles in it. And this time, I'm going from a small temperature to a high temperature they're going to move around more at this higher temperature. They're going to have more collisions, and those more collisions are going to be a higher pressure. So let's do some examples. For our examples, we always want to list our variables first. So we have a pressure of 1 104.1 kilopascals and a volume, 478 milliliters, has a pressure reduced to 88.2 kilopascals. So I have my initial conditions and my final conditions. I have pressure and volume and temperature are my three options. I start with a pressure of 104.1 kilopascals and a volume of 478 milliliters. And it says its pressure reduced to 88.2 kilopascals 
and I want to know its new volume. Because it's Boyle's Law, my temperature remains constant. So my formula with pressure and volume is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. I'm looking for V2, so I divide both sides by P2. So I get V2 equals P1 V1 over P2. I plug in 104.1 kilopascals times my volume, 478 milliliters, divided by my second pressure, 88.2 kilopascals. And that equals 564 milliliters. So as I decrease my pressure, my volume increases. That makes sense. Charles Law, we have sample gas with a volume of 8.98 milliliters at a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. My temperature is lowered to 39.9. What's the new volume? So again, I have pressure, volume, and temperature initial conditions and final conditions. I have initial volume of 8.98 milliliters, initial temperature of 38.8 degrees Celsius, temperature is lowered to negative 39.9 degrees Celsius. I want to know my new volume. My pressure did not change. I remember we learned about Kelvin in the last video. All of our gas Calculations have to have temperature in Kelvin. So to convert, I have to add 273 to both. So I get Kelvin temperatures of 311.8 Kelvin and 233.1 Kelvin. So that's what I'll use in my equation. My equation is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. I'm looking for V2. I have two fractions, so I'm first going to cross multiply. V1 T2 equals V2 T1, and then divide by what I don't want. I don't want T1, so I'm going to divide both sides by T1. So I get V2 is equal to V1 T2 over T1. Now I plug in my numbers, 8.98 milliliters. My T2 is 233.1 Kelvin divided by 311.8 Kelvin. I get 6.71 or 6 milliliters. Notice my Kelvin cancels out with my Kelvin, and I'm left with milliliters. My third example is Gay Lussac's law. I have gas at 330 Kelvin in four atmospheres, it is cooled to 300 Kelvin. I have pressure, volume, temperature, one and two. My first pressure is four atmospheres at 330.0 Kelvin. It's cooled to 300.0 Kelvin. I want to know my new pressure. Volume didn't change. P1 over T1, P2 over T2. I cross multiply, then divide. So I get P1 T2 equals P2 T1. I'm looking for P2, so I divide both sides by T1. So P2 is equal to P1 T1, sorry, T2 over T1. So I plug in, P1 is 4.0 atm, atmosphere, times my initial temperature of 330.0 Kelvin divided by my initial, oops, this should be 300 Kelvin, and that's why my initial temperature is my 330 Kelvin. When I plug those in, I get 3.6 atmospheres. So as I decrease my temperature, my pressure also decreased. So that also follows what we know. When we combine all three laws together, we will find that we have our Boyle's Law, 
And when we add in our Gay-Lussac's law and our Charles law, in both cases we divided by your temperature. So if I have temperature constant, I get Boyle's law. If I have volume constant, I get Gay-Lussac's law. And if I have pressure constant, I get Charles' law. Okay. And this is the one you'll also find in your reference packet. Standard temperature and pressure are also used in our gas laws. Okay. Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin, so 0 degrees Celsius. And standard pressure is 1.0 atmospheres. So you might see that listed in a problem where it says a gas starts at SPP, standard temperature and pressure, and that's all that it means, the standard conditions. So in practice, we have a 50 milliliter sample at STP. So that means my temperature and my pressure is my 273 Kelvin, one atmosphere. It's brought, so now we've changed, to 30 or 300 Kelvin, five atmosphere, I want my new volume. So again, set up the same way, pressure, volume, and temperature, initial and final conditions, so ones and twos. My first pressure is STP, so that's one atmosphere. My initial volume is my 50 milliliters. And my initial temperature, standard temperature, 273 Kelvin. I change to 300 Kelvin and five atmospheres. I'm looking for my new volume. So I set it up. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. I have two fractions, so I'm first going to cross multiply. P1 V1 T2 equals P2 V2 T1. I'm looking for my new volume. That's my V2. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to divide away the stuff I don't want on this side, my P2s and my T1. So they cancel out. So I'm left with V2 is equal to P1, V1, T2, my top, divided by the bottom, P2, T1. And now I just plug in from my chart. P1 was 1 atmosphere, my V1, 50 milliliters, my T2, 300 Kelvin, divided by my P2, 5.0 atmosphere, my T1, 273 Kelvin. And when I do this, I get 10.9 something, but I need to round to my lowest number significant figure my one atmosphere, my five atmospheres, so around a two, I get 11 milliliters.